right, I am going to work on my painting for the challenge that I'm doing with my group on Facebook. You guys come join the fun and do the challenge with us. And this is a challenge because it's clouds. I don't paint clouds. I paint animals. <laughs> so it's a challenge, but it's fun. And it's a great way to practice this tape trick that I just learned. And I could have done it an easier way. I do have a picture of a cat in a windowsill. And this tape trick would be so perfect to create the thin little lines of um, windowsill edges. I don't want to do the easy way though. Why would I do that? Why would I be easy on myself? Mm -mm. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something challenging and, and new. <laughs> so this is just an experiment. It's not going to a gallery. I'm not going to be entering a competition like I am with maybe another piece that I have in mind. And um, Women in Watercolor is coming up. And the, um, I think it's open, the entry deadline for Women in Watercolor goes up to the first week in June. So you have until the first week of June, I think it is, to enter Women in Watercolor. So now is the time to be painting for Women in Watercolor, y'all. So if you don't know what that is, check it out. It's really a, a really amazing competition with amazing artists in it. And I would, and last year I was an honorable mention, which was so exciting and also very motivating to try to paint just for that competition. And I may or may not get in, but the journey will be fun. It's all about the journey. Okay. So if you don't get in, it's fun to just try. So try with me because they have four categories and you can only enter one painting into each category. So animals is one, then there's landscape, floral and still life, abstract, and what's the other one? Maybe portrait. And so if I have time, I might try to do a painting for the other categories, but I'm gonna paint this today for the challenge, which I probably should be painting my commission. I have a commission I need to finish. I probably should be doing that, but I wanna do something fun with you all and have a challenge with my group, so. One thing I'm gonna try brand new to me, because you guys know how I'm stuck on my 10 paint colors, but I was recently reading in my newest book, Study of Light. So I was just reading uh, this book about Painting Light by Judy Morris, and I highly recommend this. I got this at the library and I liked it so much, I bought my own copy on Amazon. So I'll put a link to that below. And she uses uh, cerulean in her mixes to cool down her mixes when she wants to cool something down. And also cerulean is an earth color, so it grays colors down, which is really nice. And it's also really granulating. And I have two cerulean colors. I have one by Daniel Smith and I have one by Windsor and Newton. So it'll be fun to see which one we like better. Um, I think I lean towards Windsor and Newton, which is a lighter color and the flocculation slash granulation is prettier. It looks more flaky. Whereas the Daniel Smith, when it dries, the granulation looks more sandy. And I just prefer the flaky um, flocculation granulation that the Windsor Newton has. That's what I have, that is what my conclusion has been so far, but we'll see after this painting because I'll try both of them in this painting just for fun. No pressure, we're just trying some new stuff because I'm not a cloud painter. <laughs> but you know what I love even more? Limoncello LaCroix. Have you guys tried Limoncello LaCroix? This helps me not drink so much coffee and it has no caffeine, no added sweetener, nothing but flavor, no sodium, just seltzer water basically it's so good lacroix so yummy okay so i i want this to be mostly about the rays so those will be here and then this cloud will come in and i'm just roughly gonna draw of uh, the edge very roughly i am not gonna put pressure on myself to make this amazing. All right. And then here's some trees down in here. Maybe I'll put some trees in later. I don't know. All right. And so what we want is to have this edge perfectly white. So I think what I'm going to do first is paint, uh, paint the sky and then paint right up to the edge of the cloud, which I want to have a sliver of pure white, which, so that means I'll keep that totally dry. And I'm gonna get my 
kneaded eraser and just lighten this because this this is going to be kind of a delicate painting I'm thinking. Keys for success for painting with tape like we're going to do now is first of all tape will tear cheap paper. You can't use the hippie crafter paper with this technique. You've got to use good paper. I suggest 100% cotton cold press paper, hot press also tears, even if it's really good quality. So you have to use 100% cotton cold press paper, in my experience. The cheapest cold press that I know of is Balhung, which is sold on Amazon. So if you want a cheaper option, that is the best one that I know of. You have to use non-staining paints, which I'm gonna use Cerulean, Cobalt, Ultramarine, and maybe a little yellow added in to make the sky look more natural. So those are all very non-staining paints. So non-staining paints will lift because we're going to lift in this little tutorial. You have to use masking tape and you're going to need a magic eraser, which you can get in the cleaning aisle. Make sure you get the one with no bleach, no soap, nothing added because we're going to scrub. And that's another reason why you have to use good paper because a cheaper paper won't take the scrubbing with the um, Miracle Pad. Miracle Eraser, is that what it's called? I saved this box just for demonstration purposes. <laughs> This is Mr. Clean Magic Eraser Original. So the original is the one that uh, doesn't have anything added to it. So you can scrub and lighten with this. So the main idea is put tape down around the area you want to lighten, scrub it with a magic eraser blot, and it'll lighten that area that you taped off. But first we gotta get some paint on our painting. All right, so this is my cerulean blue and I should spray this to get it activated because we're going to need a lot. In fact, I'll, I think I'll just put some fresh Windsor and Newton cerulean there. So it'll be fun to try the two ceruleans and then my Windsor and Newton cerulean there. So it'll be fun to try the two ceruleans and then my other cerulean is by Daniel Smith, and it's such a darker color. It's almost like a cobalt, which is interesting. So I'm getting some cre some straight from the tube paint because I know I'll, I'm gonna want a lot. And then a lot of people ask, how do you know what brush to use when? It's really just straightforward common sense, and it's not a science because you can use, I could use a size eight to do this, but we're gonna cover a large area with clean, clear water. So we want the largest, largest brush that we have. So that's this three quarter oval in my case. Three quarter oval, you can see that it has a nice point on it. So that's helpful to get into little nooks and crannies like the nooks and crannies that we're gonna paint with the clouds. So that will help. All right, so the idea is to get a very beautiful, smooth, even sky. You get the whole sky wet with clean, clear water, and then you charge in. It's called charging in when you charge in the paint into that wet area and the idea uh, is that it will the paint when you put it on wet paper will smoothly kind of blossom out nicely so you don't have any weird edges which is what you want when you're painting a sky because it's all very smooth uh, also have your tissues ready because we'll we'll blot out some clouds too and i'm getting this pretty pretty wet and I'm painting on a block by the way of Hannah Mule cold press paper. So I would suggest Hannah Mule cold press paper or Arsh cold press is my other favorite when it's not being naughty and having bad sizing which I've had a lot of sizing issues. If I was painting this for a show I would get this edge really squiggly and and choppy, but I'm just experimenting. This is not gonna be anything I enter in a competition or sell as a, a fancy piece, so I'm not gonna worry too much about getting my edge amazingly um, nubbly and interesting. Because the main thing I wanna try is this technique of, this technique of using tape to make the rays and also practice clouds so the reason why I'm keeping this dry is because in the reference, this is a perfectly white highlight around the cloud. So the first thing we'll do is put in the blue sky, let it completely dry, and then we'll get the cloud wet, except for the little um, edge. Then we'll paint in the dark part of the cloud. It'll have three stages, the stage of painting the sky, then painting the cloud, and then 
doing the rays. We might have to mask to paint the rays. I don't know. We'll see when we get there what we think. We have to think about how we do this. That's part of the fun of watercolor is figuring out problems. And that is what painting really is. It's just a series of figuring out problems. All right. Now, this sky is interesting because usually at the top of the sky, it's darker and then it gets lighter. But in this sky, I feel like it's almost lighter up here. And then it, the darkest sky is down here. Now I've got, this is my Daniel Smith Cerulean Blue. I'm getting it very thick milk consistency. So it's like whole milk. Be sure to check out my cream milk tea consistency series I just did. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to make it look more natural. And I'm going to just charge that. Wow, that diffuses like the M. Graham Naphthol Red. What? That's crazy. How fun is that? And you can like kind of jitter your hands so you get like um, interesting edges. And then I have a little white spot. I'm going to leave that. That's a little gift of white um, speckliness. You don't want your clouds to have like a hard edge, so that's why you want to kind of jiggle your hand. And I'm going to get some um, cobalt blue too for over in here. I think it's pretty to use a few different blues. And then I'm going to rinse my brush out and get some, let's put Windsor and Newton Cerulean up in here. And then we can kind of compare. This is a great way to experiment, y'all. See, I'm just experimenting. All right, so that's the Cerulean. I'm going to get more of the Daniel Smith for down in here. Make the edge nubbly. You don't want a cloud that has a straight edge like that. I mean, clouds don't have straight edges like that. So we're going to try and nubbly it, nubbly it up. Then you can paint around a couple clouds if you want, wet and wet. Just paint around where the clouds are in the reference. And then this is really light up in here. So I'll go with some more um, Windsor Newton, which is a lighter color. Now, here's a little side trick you can do if you want to um, soften an edge, say like right here in the reference, there is a place where they join together um, a little bit. So you can make a soft edge by just spraying that. Have a couple places where the cloud kind of melts. Okay. And that'll make for a more interesting composition as well. And then another thing, you guys, I'm sure you've watched tutorials about this. I'm just showing this to you on the off chance you haven't seen this before. But obviously with clouds, you know, if you want to create some interesting um, clouds, you can also, um, you can blot up some clouds. Like say we want a cloud in there and say, okay, you say, um, that isn't light enough. So take clear, clean water and just drop it in there. And you can just let it cauliflower or you can blot again and then you'll get a lighter cloud. And then also what you can do is just make little cauliflower clouds where you just kind of scrub at it and then drop some water and it'll kind of cauliflower out softly. See, I could put a cauliflower here and, and that'll just kind of push it back maybe too. I'm gonna to cauliflower this edge by putting a bunch of, a puddle of clean, clear water drips 
see if it'll cauliflower there too. And so where I um, have these clear areas, I can drop in some drips of water to see if it'll cauliflower out. This is a play painting, so this is a perfect opportunity for you to play with these wet in wet cauliflower techniques. And it's, it, this is not a serious painting, so you can just, you know, not be scared, just do it. You can blot also and drop in water. I found that to be very effective sometimes. Um, is blot it up, drop in some water. You can even scrub at it a little and then blot up some more water or more paint and then drop in more clean, clear water for the push, cauliflower, ruffling, whatever you wanna call it, depending on what tutorial and what teacher you're taking. Drop clean, clear water, puddle, and then as it dries, you'll see some cauliflowers, and God, that granulation, that flocculation is just gorgeous. Oh, it's gonna be fun to watch this dry. Um, who knew it's fun to watch paint dry? The next thing I'm gonna do, I believe, is put on some masking. And I think I'm gonna have my rays come out like this, and then maybe another little line here, and a little line here, maybe. But these are so soft, I don't even know if I need tape, but I wanna show you the tape. So I'm gonna do the tape, but let's put some masking on, and then I'm gonna paint the clouds, and then kinda of go from there. All right, so I've got removable, Windsor and Newton masking. I just need a tiny little drop. I don't need a lot. I've got soap. I've got my old rigger and water. So I'm dipping my brush in the water, dipping the brush in water, scrubbing it on soap, and the soap protects the bristles from the masking if the masking gets too dry in my bristles. And I'm just shaping my bristles here a little bit, and then I will dip it in some masking like that and then just paint along the edges and some areas are thicker than others if you notice and some are just hair thin and some are thicker i'm not painting the part of the paper that's the exact border between the um, blue and the white and remember keep some of the edges super thin and some are thick. If you look at the reference, you'll see. All right, and then be sure to rinse your masking out as soon as possible and let that dry. And then we can paint the cloud part. All right, our masking is completely dried and now it's time to wet all these clouds and get their colors in. The clouds are really dramatic. They are like a dark purple gray up against this beautiful blue sky. So it'll be fun to see if we can get that effect. So I'm wetting everything with my three quarter oval. If you don't have this, just use your biggest brush you have that's good at covering a lot of ground. Scrubbing that water around, getting it everywhere. I'm gonna let them melt together here. Didn't quite get the drawing the way I wanted to in here, but that's all right. Again, I am not a cloud painter. I do not know if this is gonna work. <laughs> and this mix to me is purple and cerulean and some yellow for these purple, blue, gray clouds. So I'm getting some Windsor Violet and a lot of cerulean blue to add some gray. Cerulean blue is considered an earth pigment and earth pigments are usually non-staining, very granulating, and they are made from natural materials, I, I believe. And so that means that they will gray down your colors a bit too. And so that can make for some very nice dramatic skies. So Daniel Smith, cerulean blue, Windsor Newton, Windsor Violet, and we can go with some Oriolan, or you can use um, Quinn Gold would be good. Uh, just a touch of the yellow, because yellow is across the color wheel from purple. They are complementary colors. They are opposite colors. All right, I'm trying, I, I need to mix up a good bit of this because I'm gonna need a lot of paint, and this is probably not gonna be enough. This is where working from paint straight from the tube would be useful, probably. 
and in fact maybe I'll get some more straight from the tube Daniel Smith cerulean blue to help me keep this thick I think I'm, that's going to be my main color in my mix, plus a, a bit of purple and an even smaller bit of yellow is the mixing ratios. I know that looks good. That'll kind of tie it all together because there's so much cerulean in here. So that will help your painting tie together. I'm going to spray this. I want to make sure that it's still pretty evenly wet. So I did that. So that just happened. Hopefully I don't regret that. And then I'm going to drop in and here and there I'll get some lighter spots too. All right, so now I'm going to take my eight round and get a more watery version of that for lighter areas because there are lighter areas. And clean, clear water here to bring this edge over. And I'm just using a lot of hopefully cauliflower techniques. Um, I'm gonna get more paint in my brush. Um, lots of water. and going in with watery um, paint to spread this out. And then there's this white spot here. I'm gonna put clean, clear water to push into all this and hopefully it'll do something interesting. I'm gonna put a little bit of light gray in this area So I'm just roughly looking at my reference and trying to do what it says to do roughly. Oop. And another thing that you can do if your clouds look a little too um, hard edged, you know, Give them a spritzy spray. You can do that too. You certainly don't want any hard edges in clouds, do you? Um, I like this super light cloud here. I'm just emulating what I see. And then it goes super dark again. The more you can get a variety of values in your clouds, the more interesting they're going to look. Oh, that's a weird color. Why does that look so much bluer? <laughs> um, we're going to let that all melt together. Gonna get some more purple mix and to see how all this dries. Cause often when you paint this wet and wet, it dries so much diff more different looking mm -hmm. and it's kind of fun. And so now, so this is the glistening stage. 
So if you tilt it up, it really is glistening with even some puddles. And there's several stages to paper moisture that you can do different things in. In the dry stage, you can get hard edges. In the glistening stage, you can get super soft, bloomy effects like this. And then as the paper dries, as the water absorbs into the paper, look at those pinks. Where did those come from? Oh, it came from the Windsor Violet. Look how that's separating out. That is so interesting. As it dries, it goes into the buckling stage, which is, it's called buckling because it buckles. But another thing, um, if you didn't see my thumbprint video, uh, it goes into the buckling, could be also called cauliflower stage. So when you put a thumbprint in it, and it holds your thumbprint, that means it's in the full effect cauliflower stage where if you splat some water, it will cauliflower and it's still too wet for that. So we're gonna let this sit for maybe three more minutes and then we will be back. So I'm gonna turn this off for about three minutes and try to be patient, I'm bad at being patient. We'll come back and then we'll do some cauliflowers and see um, a lot of times these more granulating earth pigments that are heavier don't cauliflower as well. Like I put a lot of um, puddles of water and they did not cauliflower, but we'll, we'll try some in here. The Windsor Violet should cauliflower pretty well. I'll be back. I might've let this go too long, but let's see. It's, it is kind of holding my thumbprint. Let's play with putting some drops of clean, clear water and see if we can get this to cauliflower. It might not because like I said, this is all pretty heavily granulating paint. But I do see a little bit happening. I'm putting pretty aggressive puddles in. This is so pretty in here. I'm pretty aggressive with my uh, water here. And indeed, it is granulating. And what's so interesting is that the Windsor Violet is really granulating out of the blue and it's such a cool effect. Probably not anything I could show anybody. The design of this is not great. It's a lot of dark, 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 dark instead of a big dark chunk here and a little white here and a bunch of mediums. It's, it's not designed great, but I'm not done. But also, this is just play, let's remember, and look what we're learning. We're learning that Windsor Violet mixed with more granulating paints like Cerulean really granulates out, interesting, and the colors re-separate like it's really pink in here. And you probably can't see it very well on camera, but again, it's really an interesting granulation effect and cauliflower effect. It's gonna be fun to see what this looks like when it's dry. All right, I'm gonna let it completely dry, then we can do our rays. All right, this granulated out in a very interesting way and the, the um, blooms really got a lot bigger than I thought they would, so interesting. And there is pink and purple separated out in some of the areas, so that's really interesting too, but I'm dying of curiosity to see what this looks like after I take the masking off. So I'm just gonna take the masking off. Looking pretty blobby, <laughs> I don't know. Let me show you this tape trick though. So you just put tape where you want the edge of the ray to be. Me, I think I want it about there. And about there. No, I don't want it that narrow. Maybe like that. And then another one over here, maybe. I've got a very old magic eraser. So I'm going to use some magic eraser. And I just tear off a bit. You don't need the whole thing. Get it wet. And 
I'm going to cover up just really. But if you look at the rays, they're darker closer to the clouds. And then So I'm kind of using the tape. I'm not even using the edge of the tape. I'm make a ray. And it's kind of like lightest over farther away from the cloud, which is interesting. Okay. Clean out. And then Also, I'm making more of a disappearing edge in here. I just think that's pretty. See how you get these little sharp edges? You don't want that, but that's so easy to fix, right? And we'll fix that. You just because now what the tape did is just offered you a guide for where you want your lines, right? Your edges. So we're gonna go in with a very wet, stiffer brush. And just scrub at those lines. And just kind of smooth them out. I feel like this needs to go more like that. if I like that so I either need to fidget with this or try again what do you guys think obviously it's the next day and I've ran out of time to really finish this project because I got up this morning and took Parker's temperature and he had a fever so it's kind of throwing a wrench in my day so I'm just gonna try to get this video out to you on my deadline which I always try to publish on Saturday morning so I'm gonna wrap this video up but I do want to show you where this painting is end has ended and it is squarely in the ugly stage and that is usually the stage that's halfway through the painting when you really need to put at least another hour into your painting roughly but I just want to show you where it's at and also see if I can show you what the flocculation looks like. Up in here is where we used the Windsor & Newton cerulean and it's a uh, kind of lighter and the flocculation looks like bigger flakes. And then down in here is the Daniel Smith and it has more grainy flakes and it's a little bit darker. It looks more uh, like a cobalt, but there isn't a huge difference between the two, really, but I still think I like the Windsor & Newton because it's just a lighter color 
more delicate and I like that it's less grainy looking. If I have time to paint it again, the basic approach is gonna to be to get this part of the sky all wet, wet the whole area again and go in with some streaks of cobalt blue to up the contrast between the lighter rays and the darker cobalt sky. This is just not enough contrast. It doesn't make anything pop. And I need some darker sky against the super white highlights along the tops of the clouds because right now it's all kind of melting together in one value of kind of light medium color everywhere except for these blobs of dark and then these blobs of dark need to be much larger and uh, a lot more dramatic so I, I need to go in and put extend these because right now let's see this is a little blob here's a blob there's a blob they all need to be more connected like they are in the reference photo so it's not blobby looking there's bigger I need bigger shapes to make more of a dramatic impact in this painting so if I have time to work on this painting some more, that would be what I would focus on. So that is where it stands right now. I haven't gotten much further on my commission. I have to get this done. I told my client that I would try to get this done this week and it's already Friday. I just realized I was looking at the Women in Watercolor pros Prospectus again and what it said is that you can't re-enter anything that you've entered in Women in Watercolor before. So that hum, that painting of my cat Hummer, I won't be able to repaint that. I don't think I can repaint it. And I probably could repaint it because then it's a new painting, but it'll look exactly like what I, I put in last year unless I change it dramatically. So I might do a new painting uh, for the Women in Watercolor and it's probably gonna be a My Cat Diana. So she is a very long furred, fluffy, uh, she's just a rescue cat that I feed from outside. I would bring her in if I could, but she would fight with Flurkin. But anyway, I might paint her for the Women in Watercolor competition. I was gonna do a Hummer again, but I found out I can't. So you really need to read that prospectus closely and make sure that you are following their guidelines as far as entering that competition. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Come to my Facebook page and join the challenge for these clouds. And my conclusion right now is that the tape trick actually might not be the best way to get rays because if you look at the reference of the rays, they have very soft edges. They don't have hard edges like tape creates. And if you look at Thomas Schaller's work where he used tape, he let them have really hard edges and that was very effective. So I don't know if this tape trick, I initially thought it would be perfect for sun rays, but now that I've gotten into the process and understand my subject a little bit better, which that's why we do studies, that's why we practice, that's why we experiment, I'm finding that I think that it would be easier to make the rays more freehand. And so I might go in and try again and if I have time to work on this painting, I will, but it's really not what my focus is and I wanna get another cat painting done for my, pa my very patient Patreon members. I haven't done any classic Rachel dreamy animal paintings lately. I've been doing a lot of like, experimental things and I just feel like I need to do a cat. I just need to do a cat for my Patreon members because the core of my Patreon audience likes to paint cats like me. So anyway, that's where I'm at. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this video and just this chit chat. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to hear what you all have to say in the comments. And until next time, go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.